Welcome back. This week we're diving deep into how to detoxify your body with former British champion and acrobat Skip Archimedes. Um, Skip works all over the world these days helping people to master their health and in this video he's going to be with us. If you're new to this channel my name is Neil Fellows and in this uh, series we're exploring um, health and wellness under the premise that some illnesses and diseases may be avoidable if we were to take proactive measures to prevent them from happening. And each week I interview wellness experts and dive deep into aspects of your health and well-being with the aim of giving you greater freedom and flexibility to find out what works for you as a unique individual. If you want to explore your health and wellness, please hit the, um, the subscribe button and the bell to get notified of all of our latest uploads as soon as they happen. And if this channel can help your friends or family too, please also share it with them so that they can get the benefits too. So this week, my guest is Skip Archimedes and let's dive deep now into how to detoxify your body. So Skip, thanks for joining me. Um, why don't you just give a very quick introduction to yourself so that everyone understands who you are. Well, hi guys. Uh, welcome everybody who's watching this. And I have the fortune of traveling all around the world uh, pretty much every single month. I'm in a different time zone and delivering events, workshops and retreats, all with health being the foundation of everything that we want to build and create in our lives. And making sure that when we're creating our personal life and our business life, that we've got that balance and we've got that alignment so that we're connected to the truth. Because when we have that truth breathing through us, then we find our freedom. So that's what I have the fortune of doing now. Yeah, fantastic. And some things that we're going to talk this afternoon about how to remove toxins from your body. And the place we want to start with is, I've heard you talk about this before, how the cells regenerate. So I'd love for you to, to tell our community about um, how that works. Brilliant. So this physical thing that we live in, that we call a, a human body, is made up of anything from 50 to 100 trillion cells. Now, the super cool thing about our body is that literally like every three seconds, we've got about 50,000 cells just dying. Now, that might be really inspirational and motivational for some people. If they know that the super cool thing is as soon as they die, you just had 50,000 new ones emerge every few seconds. So what does this mean? Over the course of say like a year, most of the cells in our body are brand new cells. But the challenge is, are we regenerating into a better version of ourselves or a watered down version of ourselves? Because if we look at the way that most people age in the modern world, when most people are having things shut down in their body or they're getting the aches and the pains or, things just stop working and people go, oh yeah, but that's just part of getting old. And I'm like, BS, that's part of getting toxic. That's why you're getting the aches and pains. That's why you're aging in a way where we age and we decline. This thing shouldn't shut down. If we give the body what it needs, and there's a basic process to this, is the first thing is we have to stop the poisoning. So for that to happen, we got to have awareness of how we poisoning the body. And there's a whole conversation around that because when we look at our wonderful world in the background, when you see that amazing thing, that nature has all the answers and nature has a rhythm to it, nature has a flow to it. We've got to get back in that rhythm. We've got to get back in flow, not feeling like we keep hitting up against a brick wall all the time, whether it's in our own mind and body, in our relationships, in our business. The challenges are going to happen, but what I've learned, and thank God I've been really challenged in, in some great ways in life, is that within our challenges are our greatest blessings waiting to be born. And But that we can only make sure that a challenge turns into the blessing when we've learned the lesson. And that lesson means that we've got to have more awareness, we've got to have more clarity, we've got to have more the truth. And the truth is that this thing that you live in like even out in Asia, all the press labeled me the miracle man out there. But what I've literally, since I've given me that name, it's like I have people come up to me and ask me to do the weirdest and wonderful things. But what I keep telling people is that, look, you're the miracle. You know, there's nothing different. I'm just this, you know, I was raised in a normal way that most people are raised with not a lot of money. And, and I got challenged just like we all do. 
So, and there's, so there's nothing special about me than anybody who's watching this. Now, the super unbelievable thing about our human system is that if we feed it food, that our planet behind has grown. That food that's had the energy of the sun beaming down on it, it's had the energy of the universe feeding it. It's learned to weather different seasons. When we pick that food, so that food isn't because, let me ask you this quick question, which I mean, they're leading questions, but I have to say it because I want people to, to make this common sense. Where do we think the most power is going to come from? A factory that's going to process food or the planet and the sun and the universe that creates food? Yeah. I know. It's not, the answer seems obvious, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's not rocket science, is it? But what, what's happening to people's food choices? They're buying food that's been processed in a factory. And the reason why they're doing that is because people are either going for what's convenient or they're going for what the emotion is connecting to. So they're eating for emotional reasons instead of nutritional reasons. Now, when we understand that we're not getting old and we're not breaking down because we're getting old, we're doing that because we're getting toxic. So where are these toxins coming from? So first thing, let's look at our food. This is the most simple thing we can look at. What you, what you eat is what you are. What you eat becomes you. So we've got to make sure that we are taking in live foods, foods that have had the sun shining on them, food that have had the energy of the planet connected to it, food that have had to weather different seasons. We then pick that food, or we get someone to go and pick that food when it's in season. We go in our supermarkets, we're so disconnected from the truth because we want the same foods 12 months of the year. Nature doesn't work like that. So we've got to be able to start to look for, let's find some local farmers. Let's find some people that are around our areas. Let's support them, not necessarily the supermarkets, that their only motivation in the supermarket is the bottom line. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but that's their motivation. Usually when you find a local farmer, what you're going to find is someone who's just passionate and loves what they do. Yeah. And, and they will deliver boxes of fruits and vegetables to your door every single week, and there'll be stuff that's in season. The challenge with that is... We've manipulated the food industry now as a human race. And I want to be able to bring this, you know, people are going to get a lot of information in this. So I don't want them to drown in all this information, but I want it to have some awareness within their field. So now they can start to make new choices that are going to move their life in the direction where they really want their life to go. Because I'm talking about having health and energy and abundance and good vibes pulsing through us. So that the thing we live in gets fed with all this good stuff and then we put that energy into our creations and what comes out of us is going to be magical. Not what comes out of us is the anger or the frustration or the anxiety or the mental health problems, which I know you want to go into a little bit later on as well. Yeah. So what we want is our immunity being built up to such a high frequency that it doesn't matter whether it's a virus, an illness, an ailment, doesn't matter what that stuff is. All of that stuff can just operate in a low frequency. But guess what's going to feed this? Processed foods, dead foods, animal products. All this stuff is pulling energy away from the human system and taking us down, 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 where all of a sudden there's a virus going around, bam, it's going to get you. Or an illness, a flu, it's going to get you. Whereas when you start to feed your body what it needs from the food, from the thoughts, from the emotions, from the energy, because energy is going to win every single time. So we want to make sure that we are nourishing the body with foods that the planet have made. Now, sure. within those foods, we want to make sure that we understand the truth because what has happened around the world is because of all this fast crop rotation, because the supermarkets are looking for the same foods 12 months of the year, What's, what we've done is we've manipulated the food industry. Now, what that then means is that because of this fast crop rotation, because of all the herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, all this stuff that they're spraying on our land, yeah. we basically drain the minerals in the soils around the world by about 80%. Now, what that means is that as we're eating these fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds and grains and all this stuff, this stuff that we're eating only contains about 5 to 20% of the nutritional value that we would have from that same food about 100 years ago. 
So we have to supplement. The challenge is 98% of the supplements on the market are a waste of money. So mm -hmm. I want to give people a few no-goes around the supplement. Don't ever go for isolated nutrients. Don't ever go for heat press supplements. Don't ever go for stuff that has like bulking agents in it because all of those are ripping life away from them. And for that, if you're reading this, you're going to have to go and read the back labels. So I just want to give people the, you know, what to do, what not to do, because we've got to get live foods in the diet, in the body it's needed. I want to come back and talk a bit more about the live nutrients again in a second. There's just a couple of things I want to pick up on on what you said. Um, during the, talking about local produce food produced by a farmer that's doing it with love and care and that kind of thing. Um, during the coronavirus lockdown, uh, my parents couldn't get their normal food deliveries because they, they just weren't available. So they started buying locally. Mm. And um, so they're buying these fruits and veg from their local farm shop. And they're saying to me, Neil, you won't believe the oranges we're getting right now. You won't believe the carrots that we're getting. I wish you could just come round and we could show you yeah. <laughs> what we're getting from the local farm shop. So there was that that um, just wanted to say. Um, to, to back up what you're saying there. Um, but also, I'm talking about cell regeneration and removing toxins from the body. So if we we're able to start eating more live nutrients, if we we're able to um, improve the emotions that we live with, are you saying then that illness um, and diseases can actually really be eradicated from the body because the cells are regenerating every day into something that's new? So illness and disease then goes away 100 percent, 100 percent. and i'm so glad i'm not a doctor and i want people to understand this that i'm not a doctor i'm not here to diagnose anyone i'm not here to treat anyone because doctors study illness they don't study health yeah. so what i study is health and that's like you know the metaphor is if you want to be financially independent financially rich you're not going to go and study poor people expecting to get rich. The whole medical industry has got it the wrong way around. So just to give a little bit of uh, facts around that, third leading cause of death on planet Earth now is a correctly prescribed medication. So if you go to a doctor, don't expect to get healthy. That, yeah. that, that's, just, that's me saying it. I wouldn't go near a doctor with a 10-foot barge pole because all they're going to diagnose you to do is give you a chemical, to give you a drug which we know has side effects. What you want to find is a health practitioner, a medical expert, someone who has a, who's looking at things with, from a holistic point of view. So we, we have to understand this, that health is our birthright, that the trillions of cells that make up our physical body, they're all working 24-7. And the intelligence, what people have inside of them is beyond measure we can't even measure this level of intelligence like there was a time i, I oh I, I could so get into what we have within us and, and and what is happening literally every 24 hours it would blow people's minds if they knew that this thing that they live in is the most powerful thing on the face of the planet when it's not polluted with toxins and poisons when we get that balance and a lot because Health isn't the absence of disease. This is what I want people to understand, that you're regenerating all the time. It's just like, let me make it common sense. If I cut myself right now, what would I have to do to heal myself? Nothing. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Now, if I cut myself on the outside where we can see blood coming out, and again, I've been so fortunate to have been an, you know, an acrobat, to have been a gymnast, an athlete, and, you know, suffered a broken back, snapped tailbone, snapped Achilles, uh, you know, ripped like this tendon right off the bone, I've snapped so many bones, I've done so many cool things to this system, but not one symptom now. And I was riddled with diseases as a kid, and I want people to know, you know, I was covered from head to toe with eczema, I had chronic asthma, um, allergies to dust, to animals, to pollen, to grass, uh, was always on some type of antibiotic, so I know what being ill, you know, I was most of my child life being raised, I was ill. Let me just start and, you, because you're talking about broken bones there. And I, I broke a bone in my, my wrist. I fell 14 feet once, head first, gas up here, um, permanent bewilderment, my extra eyebrow, broke my nose, broke my wrist. And people said to me at that time, I would probably suffer from arthritis by the time you're in your 40s. There's a nice little spell being cast on me. But 
when when did you break when did you do your damage when did you break your bones how long ago was that and what age are you at now because i'm just i'm just curious because of the way that you um, go about living your life with the energy yeah. that you live with so so let, let me I'll do the first major injury that I had, which was yeah. when, when I broke my back when I was doing gymnastics, when they said, right, that's it, you're never going to walk again. That age, I was 18, 19. Now, recently, we're filming a documentary where I've got some of the greats on our planet in this documentary, and maybe three years ago, um, we were filming in Malaysia. Um, I climbed to the top of the waterfall to, um, to do a few yoga poses at the top, a few meditation shops to use as, a B, uh, as cutaway B-roll shots. While I was up on the top, some water came. I slipped and just didn't see this water coming. I slipped about 50 feet down this waterfall, hit a rock at the bottom, snapped my tailbone, snapped this wrist. The bone was sticking out here. And, and again, I'm in and out of consciousness. And they, you know, they get me in hospital. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And they said, look, these are your x-rays. You've snapped your tailbone. Now, the tailbone went from a C shape to an L shape. And it went from being straight down the body to being knocked over to one side of the body. Now we knew we had to get the bones realigned, but if I went and had that operation, uh, I, they were saying for me, like, you know, you're talking like, you know, you've been out for months and months and months and months and months. And, you know, they were saying like, oh, nine months before, you know, you'll be you know, walking properly again. And I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna have these guys operate. If that's my diagnosis and my, re you know, my recovery, there's no way. And, I didn't have an operation for that particular one. I'm not against operations if it, if it's really needed at that you know at that time for the you know for whatever the symptom is or the condition. But no symptom. And I was on stage performing not long after that. And what I want to know, uh, so what I want to share with people is what what I want them to know is that your belief system basically depicts what your reality of life is going to be because nothing in life means anything until we've pinned a meaning on it. Sure. Now, usually when we go, and let, let me use this as a diagnosis because a lot of people who are watching this might either experience this or know someone who experiences it. So let's say we go and get diagnosed with an injury or we get diagnosed with a life-threatening symptom. Let's say it's cancer and I go in hospital and they say, right, skip, We've got all the tests back. We're really, really sorry to tell you, but we've now diagnosed you with cancer. If I'm the average person, am I going to sit there and go, hey, Doc, I really appreciate this diagnosis from you. This is just what I needed. I've realized that you know, my lifestyle has led me to cancer. So now I've got to look at my lifestyle and, and understand that I've got to stop the poisoning. I've got to start the cleansing. I've got to start nourishing the body with what it needs so that I can get rid of this cancer. Is that how people respond? Not even close. Take, you uh, probably generally take the medicine and go down the medical route. Most people, wouldn't they? I mean, it's one hundred percent. And I, I want to explain a lot, don't they? Yeah, and I want to explain what the medical industry are doing now because they 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 they've changed their direction. They've changed their motivation, which I want people to understand. So most people would sit there and freak out emotionally. Oh my god, I've got cancer! Because what the medical industry do is they create such a big mystery around whatever's going on. If they've got a mystery around it, guess what? You're confused, they can control you. They can put fear in you, fear lowers your frequency, they now got you dependent on their medication for the rest of their life, they've just created a lifetime customer. So what, the me so what we should do is understand the truth, that the body is regenerating all the time, and I've had the fortune of seeing people at stage fours, and stage four, by the way, is usually where the medical industry says, that's it, they're sorry, there's nothing more we can do, go and spend this time with your loved ones. And stage four, we cleanse the body, we stop the poisoning, sorry, we stop the poisoning first, we cleanse the body, we give the body what it needs, and providing there's movement involved, providing there's the right emotions involved, providing there's the right nourishment involved, all of a sudden, what's gonna happen from that point on is the body's gonna to start to get stronger because what makes the body weak is decreased workload. This is why where they're making people lie down and do nothing in the recovery phase, to me is one of the stupidest things ever because we've gotta activate the body because it's through the activations can we start to experience the transformations that we're looking for. So with the medical industry, this is what they've done, Neil. And this is so important for people to understand that 
their motivation used to be um, selling people drugs. And, and in the drugs, we now know that there's side effects. And the side effects that they have to legally write on some of them now is death. So you now go into a doctor where they have to write death on the side effects. Now, yeah. because people are realizing that, and that word can travel fast, if you get given a drug and you send, you know, you hear like me or somebody else talking about, look, just go and read, just go and have a look at your side effects. If you see the word death, now all of a sudden that person's going to go back to their doctor and go, look, doctor, are you give me this drug? Well, I could die having this drug. Why would you give me this drug? They, doctors don't want to be in those positions. The, pharma, the, the people who own the pharmaceuticals, big pharma, they don't want their doctors in those positions. So what they've done is they've now changed the game. And do you know what their motivation is now? I don't, but go on. Because it's not selling drugs. Right. Because they're, they're still earning a lot of money, but they're now about to earn a lot more money in what we call the vaccinations. Vaccines. All their focus now has gone into vaccines. Why? Because as soon as you get a vaccine, not a drug, as soon as you get a vaccine signed off by the government, if someone dies on the vaccine, there's no comeback. They can't go, no one can go and sue. Wow, yeah. So, this, so they've just gotten all this stuff cleared. So all I wanna to say to people is that if you're gonna have a vaccine, make sure you know what the ingredients are in that vaccine. And watch, if you go and ask what the ingredients are, watch how challenging that is. Yeah, okay, really interesting. So we were, we were talking about um, how to remove toxins from the body. We talked about yeah. cell regeneration. Um, we, as we were just talking just now, you mentioned movement. We were um, starting to talk about nutrients. So that, is there more you wanted to add in terms of using live nutrients that you haven't already covered? Well, I mean, what I do is, you know, I mean, if anybody does want to know, you know, we, we created our, our own uh, superfood brand. And the, the, the only reason we did that is because when I realized all this information, I couldn't find uh, products that I wanted to put inside my body, uh, you know, on the marketplace. Because mm. as soon as I learned about all these cheap farming techniques, about the processes that they take it from its original source into a powder or into whatever form it is that we take it in tablets, I learned, oh my God, this is a toxic process. We just create our own. And the results that we experience are just out of this world. And in literally one scoop of our superfoods, you've got more nutritional value in that one scoop than what most people eat in a week. Yeah. So I just want to say to people, it is so important to supplement, but please do read, not what's on the front label, read what's in the ingredients. That bit, they have to always type, you know, put in it what, you know, what that source is, because then you'll know what's in it. So what I want to share as well is when you're talking about like the cell regenerating and regenerating and regenerating, that's going to, because what happens is, all food is, is a shuttle system to be able to get the nutrients in the food into your blood. Yeah. If, if they don't end up in your blood, the whole process is a waste of time. You know, for me, I'm always like, what, what's the end game here? What's the end goal? What's our motivation here? And a lot of people are eating foods that are dead. So that are eating foods that are draining the body of energy. They're putting acid in the body. Now, it's important for people to understand that you've got your blood pH is going to show whether you've got a river of life pulsing through your body or whether you've got a river of death mm -hmm. pulsing through your body. Now, what we want to understand is that pH is down for potential hydrogen, but zero is acid. Yeah. 14 is pure alkaline. We don't want to be in the middle at seven. We want to be round about 7.4 up to about 7.6. Now, that's more than what I studied it. Now, that changed because of a friend of mine called Wim Hof. Uh, they call him the Iceman. Yeah, and he's yeah. done some insane stuff. And we've done like a few events together. and We became like buddies. And he took that pH up to a way higher level than what I was educated with. Um, but he then took a study way beyond what anybody else has done because these people were injected with pure poison and I'm talking poison that should have knocked them out for two weeks. They, they were injected with enough E. coli that for two weeks they should have been having hot and cold fevers. They should have been feeling nauseous. They should have been like, you know, tired. Not one person got a symptom and the reason being 
was because they were alkaline. So let's talk a little bit around alkalinity because if we do have any disease, any symptom in the body, you can guarantee the symptoms, uh, sorry, the body's going to be acidic. And what we want to get in our blood is alkalinity. Now, when we've got that alkalinity in our blood, think about this, every time your heart beats, what is it doing? It's beating that blood. And that blood goes to literally every single cell that makes up your physical body. Every single cell needs your blood and that delivers oxygen, water, and nutrients. So the first thing that we've got to look at getting in the body is oxygen, is air. Yeah. Now, for a lot of people, they're not moving their body anywhere near the levels that they should be moving their body. So one of the things that we can do is understand, right, let's make things common sense. you got kids, and do kids move a lot more than most adults? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do they have a lot more energy than most adults? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the younger they are, the more energy they seem to have, actually. Like two-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds have got a lot more energy than a 16 or 17-year-old would potentially have. Yeah. yeah. Now, so, so you're seeing that. So going from three to four, just to up to 16, what we're seeing, so what the mm. hell happened for three years? So let me ask a few more questions. Let's go keep going from, keep them around, like, say, three, four, five, six, seven, that age. Yeah. Do they learn faster than most adults? Absolutely, yeah. Do they have a lot more natural joy than most adults? Definitely, yeah. Do they speak the truth more than most adults? I don't think they know. Well, that's an interesting one. They speak their truth, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and usually their truth is still connected to, and I don't want to get weird and we will be on people, but they'll still connect to the spirit realm. Yeah. Because we, we've been born into a world where it's all about the mind and just all about the body. But what about the mind, body, spirit? You know, any of these yeah. ancient teachings, whether, you know, if you want to get into scriptures from religions, but if we're talking about ancient wisdom, they all talk about the mind, body, spirit, every single one of them. So I haven't found one that is, has been around for thousands of years. They only talk about the mind and the body. Yeah. They all talk about something else that's out there. You call it universe intelligence. You call it God. You call it life. You call it supreme intelligence. Whatever the word is, doesn't explain it. But there mm. is this thing that's making your heart beat consistently. There's this thing that allows the cells of your body to all stick together so that you can now experience life through the body, life through the mind, or life through the spirit. Now, the beautiful thing is, as soon as we wake up to that truth and we understand that all these three elements come together, all we've got to do is work at getting those three elements back in alignment so that we create that balance and that alignment. All of a sudden, we're waking up to a different life every single day. But feeding this physical thing we need in is a major part of that, because if we eat the wrong stuff, yeah. or we drink the wrong stuff consistently, that's going to create acid in the body, and that acid is going to start to break, it. so it's going to start to rust us from the inside out. You know, it's like battery acid. You know, why am I talking about alkalinity? Well, let's make things make common sense. Duracell batteries, why do they last seven times longer than normal batteries? They're alkaline. So we want to get alkalinity pulsing through our blood to boost up our energy, to boost up our immunity, and... You know, there's enough studies out there now that show that disease can't live or manifest in an alkaline environment. So what are we talking about? Dark green leafy vegetables. We're talking about juicing every single day. Like literally just before this, I literally just finished a, you know, another green juice just before this call. Because you know, from literally from when my eyes open in the morning, and usually it's around 5, 5.30 most mornings, and I'm going until I drop in the evenings, and it's just non-stop all the time. Now, for that, I'm creating a lot of acid. So I've got to learn how to alkalize the system. Now, breath work is also awesome for that, you know, to bring into breath work and to understand how that we can direct the mind. Because a lot of people now, they're pinning meanings on things in life, and guess what it's bringing up? Fear, sure. doubt. Yeah. disconnection from that truth and with that disconnection now we start to feel alone and we start to go on this downward spiral and we're going down and down and down but because everybody else around us is on that same downward spiral no one realizes that we're on the downward spiral so we just have to look at the absolute truth of what's going on on planet earth and 
And the truth is, we're meant to be the most intelligent species on the face of the planet, but how come now we're the only species that's now contributing to its own destruction? Because we're out of balance, we're out of alignment. When we find that balance and alignment within ourselves, then we not only contribute to ourselves more and our families more and our communities more, but we actually contribute back to life more. So it's bringing this consciousness shift back into the game. And when we bring that back into the game, we have more conscious choices when it comes to food. We have more conscious choices when it comes to relationships. We have more conscious choices when it comes to our finances and our business, because we become more conscious in our choice making. Sure, that sounds great. When we're talking about, we've moved on to talking about cleansing the mind really as well here, haven't we? Um, one of the, the big things, one of the biggest challenges I think that we've got really in our society at the moment is the, the, the issue of depression. Mm. A lot of people suffer from it. And maybe there's people who actually don't even realise that they're suffering from depression. Yeah. Massive amounts of um, stress through um, jobs or a virus, um, those kind of things um, that have happened to, to people recently. Um, fast change, moving houses, life change, that the, the residue from that sometimes is actually a drop in energy and then a dip into the, to a depression that you might not even realise is a depression. Talk to us a little bit about it, because I know that you, when you were younger, you, you've actually suffered from depression yourself. Tell us a bit what, what you went through and how you overcame that. Well, as you said, you know, when you're in it, you just don't even know you're in it. And you, like for me, I, I made all of my choices from that place. I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to, um, yeah, just didn't want to speak to people. And, and for me, I just got numb. And in that numbness is, um, it's a very dark and lonely place. You, you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Um, and, and even having big dreams, it, it, everything's too far out of reach. Mm. And, what I had to do was, um, and it was actually my mum who helped me so much through it, was just knowing what my next step was going to be and knowing if that step is in the right direction to the type of life that I wanted to create, then, okay, can I take that next step? Yeah, I can do that thing. And then it's just doing one thing. And then it's just doing another thing. And then before you know it, you actually get used to walking. But it's the same as when we learned how to walk. You didn't just learn how to walk. You stood up and you fell over. You stood up and you fell over. Then you took a step and you fell over again. And you took two steps and then you fell over again. But you learn how to get back up. And the, and the beautiful thing about children is I haven't seen one baby that kept falling down and falling down and falling down. I've never seen one baby complain when it gets back up again. <laughs> you get back up. Well, that's ridiculous. When I say it, it's just absolutely insane. But what's happening with humans is that getting down and that complaining on the way down, I heard this saying yesterday, it was beautiful. When a tree grows or when anything grows, it grows in silence. But when it falls down, there's noises when it crashes down. True. And this is the same for a lot of people that look at, you know, everyone's, I'm falling. It's like we need those falls to learn how to get back up. We need those falls to be able to reassess situations sometimes. And the ones that are going to be the winners in the game of life, it isn't the most intelligent ones. Yeah. Because a lot of people are gauging intelligence on academia. Mm. And that's just dealing yeah. with one element of what we are. Yeah. What this is all about is it's about flexibility. It's about adapting faster. Because if we look at all the species on the planet, it's not just the, the species that are the most intelligent the most intelligent ones, it's the ones that have adapted to their environment. And we just have to look now, our environment around planet Earth is changing fast. Mm. And, and if we don't learn how to adapt, then all of a sudden, especially you know, if you're in business as well, what you did last year, if you carry on doing the, thing, the same thing, that could be the very thing that now puts you out of business. So we've got to learn how to be flexible. We've got to learn how to readjust. Like, you know, if you're sailing a ship and all of a sudden that wind changes direction, and if you go, well, we've always put it in this direction and it's always worked in the past. Mm. Well, the wind's changed direction now. So guys, we've got to reset that sail. And if you haven't trained people how to reset or how to be flexible or how to really be in the now and see what's going on for the truth of it, not the illusion that most people are buying into. So 
then we can start to make a decision, right, now what's our next step going to be? Mm. So whether that's coming out of depression, whether that's coming out of mental health problems, whether that's your business going through a depression, whether that's the own body or mind or a relationship, doesn't matter what the situation is, what now matters is what's your next step going to be? Because the thing that I found as well is when I came out of that depression and I started to speak to others um, who'd gone through it, some people started getting, and this is what we've got to be really careful of, we're absorbing information all the time, literally billions of pieces of information every single second. And energy is going to win every single time. And But there's positive energy and there's negative energy. So we want to make sure that we've got these positive vibes pulsing through us and we know how to focus that energy. Because whether people know it or not, we're all creating our own reality. Now, are we creating a reality that we like? Because what we do today is going to depend on what well we wake up in tomorrow. And it just keeps repeating again and again and again. And everyone's looking for the instant get rich quick. Everyone's looking for the how to lose weight and how to get abs in like seven minutes. And it's just like, it's just ridiculous like the things that people are buying into now. They want these instant, you know, these dopamine hits. This is why, you know, on social media, we're looking for these hits all the time. Mm. And, and we're all looking for instant satisfaction. But nothing of any greatness in life ever happened instantly. It's what you do on a consistent basis. You know, what are your standards? What are your habits? What are you creating every single day that you can go, you know, you can put your head down at the end of the night and go, you know what? I did a lot today. I did good today. But it's not doing a lot where you burn out because in that doing a lot, you've got to make sure that you give the body the right type of fun exercise on a daily basis. That's key. We've got to make sure that we're drinking the right fluids that's putting alkalinity into the body. We've got to make sure that we're eating foods that when we look at our plate, our plate is nice and bright and colourful because nature has put food on that plate. And when we start to move the body in the fun ways, and this is the secret ingredient, it's fun. Because if, without the fun, what we don't get is we don't get this release of, the, of the, these endorphins. Yeah. So when we do move the body in fun ways, these endorphins get released. It sends a chemical out throughout our whole system. And guess what? We feel good. And when we do that and we get addicted to doing that again and again and again, and it takes time to do that because the old ways are going to try and come in. The old ways, you know, are going to say, hey, I'm, I'm meant to be getting up for, say, doing yoga in the morning. And that mind's going to go, oh, but we don't have to do it today. And then we listen to that voice and that voice is the trap. So we have to choose what voice are we going to listen to because this thing is in our control yeah. and it's being programmed every day, but we have to be the ones to program it. It's interesting to hear you saying about the, the habits of coming out of um, depression because I'm also thinking about the habits of going into a depression as well because something happens um, and let's say that creates a mood. And that mood might actually ripple on for a few more days. And before we know it, we've got an attitude. Mm -hmm. And then it carries on. Before we know it, we've got a way of life. And we didn't even know we created it. But what you're talking about is to come out of that. We've become, as you mentioned earlier on, more conscious about what we're doing and the habits that we're creating and why we're doing things and bringing in more fun and live nutrients and those kind of things that you're talking about. Um, and then gradually we can change that. So I think that's a brilliant way of... Um, Helping people skip. We, um, we it's baby steps. Let's just take it back to baby yeah. steps. That's what it comes it down to. Yeah. We didn't learn to walk. No one gave us a manual to walk. And, it, and you never like have your kids and go, come on, you put one foot here and one foot there. No, monkey see, monkey do. You know, we learn mostly from visual stuff. Yeah. And when we can start to learn what's possible, that's what we need to be learning. Because if we're not learning and growing every single day, I can tell you now, as a part of us, are going to feel like it's dying. Because I want people to get these stats, Neil, that we have, on average, I don't know who counts these, but apparently on average we have about 50,000, 60,000 thoughts every single day. Now, according to the psychological model, 90% of most people's thoughts in today's world, they're negative. This is insane. And not just negative, they're the ones we had yesterday as well. <laughs> That's exactly that. So... 90% of the thoughts that we had yesterday, we are regurgitating today. So what we've got to now start to do is say, right, what is going to fire me up? What is going to get me out of my head 
and into the body. And I can tell you the number one thing, because thinking never got a single person out of depression. Yeah. Never did. No. What got the person out of depression was a feeling, not thinking. And the yeah. best way how to create a new feeling is to go and move the body in a way that you enjoy. Absolutely, because one of the things as we talk about depression that, that I um, realized when I was, was going through some of this was that one morning I woke up and it was even before I thought, it was like the chemical had just been released in my body, which was the same feeling I was used to having at that time of day. It's like, oh God, it's, it's, it's morning. I need to do something now. But like you say, the only thing that got me out of that was actually getting myself out of bed and getting myself in movement and getting on the yeah. rebounder and starting to move or do something. Because then you stop thinking about the depressive stuff and you actually, because when you're working out doing a hit exercise or something like that, or you're out running, it's hard sometimes to think about the depressive, yeah. the depressive things when you're actually in movement and struggling for breath, perhaps. So. Yeah, that's good. It's key, you know, through emotion, through emotion, we create emotion. And the quality of our lives comes down to the quality of the emotions that we feel on a daily basis. This stuff is key. It's so important people get this. So when I'm interviewing our experts, I like them to leave us with a challenge. Uh, because otherwise, just listening to you, it's been a very interesting 30, 45 minutes. But if we don't take something on and try something new as a result of it, life just stays exactly the same so i might regret this in a minute but what would be <laughs> your challenge for not just for me but for our community what would you suggest that we would take away from this and try just one thing okay um right you put me on the spot now let me oh i've got i've got a goodie i've got a goodie i've got a goodie right so um so based on all the stuff that we've been talking about um, I want to, before I say what this is, uh, let, let, me, uh, let me ask if people want these results. So I'll ask them to you and you, you can be a voice for, for your audience. Okay. So do you want to look younger? Yeah. Do you want to feel younger? Yeah. Do you want to have more energy? Yeah. Do you want to boost up your immunity? Yeah. Brilliant. Right. What I'm going to suggest is going to help you with all of those things. So there's no negative side effects that you can experience through this. Now, when I say what it is, for some people who are watching this, it's gonna bring some stuff up and their mind's gonna go, screw that, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> now, when that happens, I want you to understand that the only reason why that's happening is based on the programming that they've already received. Because yeah. there's no yeah. negative side effects that come from this. And they can only win if they do what I'm now gonna suggest. So, there was a study done in the UK and they found the number one thing to slow down and reverse the aging process. And guess what it is? Um, it'd either be something like breathe more or drink more water. It's got to be something like that. No? Kind of the first one, but not properly. So what it is, it's um, dancing with no inhibitions. Dancing with no inhibitions. So here's my challenge, if you accept it. Okay. The challenge is, is for you to find a song that you absolutely love, but it can't be a slow song. It's got to be a song where it's got some energy in. Now, this doesn't have to be done in front of anyone. This is not about looking cool. This is not about getting any moves right. This is about going in a room. I mean, you can do it with others around, but this is about effectively just you giving this gift to yourself. You bung a song on and you dance with total freedom. You, it doesn't matter what move you do because no one's judging you. So it's so important that you don't judge yourself. Because if we go into a judgment phase, then that judgment mechanism goes and we can't help anyone and we can't help ourselves in that moment when that judgment mechanism, me, uh, mechanism is moving. So bunging on a song, it doesn't matter what the song is, but it, the song has to move you. It's got to be one of those songs that when you hear it on the radio, you just start like rocking out to it if you're driving your car. One of those songs, but now... Instead of just the head moving, we're going to get the whole body moving. We're going to get some type of movement within the body because then what's going to happen is after that three and a half, four minute song is done, what I want people to do is to write down how they feel mentally and emotionally before they do it. Ten being I'm ecstatic, I'm free as a bird, zero being I'm in depression. Okay. 
So then when you've done it, what we're looking for is an improvement on that number. Yeah. Now, when the brain clocks that, oh my God, I was at a level five before I went into this, and now just in three and a half minutes, I'm now at, say, at like level six or a level seven, when you've seen that improvement, next time that you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, I can't be asked to do this, a part of you is going to know it's really, really good for you, and it's going to get you up and doing it. Now, if they do that every single day, even just for a week, they are going to start to look younger. They're going to start to feel younger because the freedom that it brings up, because a lot of people in their bodies, they've got physical pains. They're not physical pains anymore. They're trapped emotional energies. So when we can move the physical body, what you're doing is you're cleansing, you're detoxing. You, that energy is moving stuff through the body. And guess what? You get to feel good at the same time. There's nice. zero to lose and everything to gain. Nice one. So for seven days, dance for three or four minutes to a track that you really enjoy and then write down how you feel mentally and emotionally after you've done it. Compared to how you were before it. Okay, brilliant. Okay, nice one. Awesome. Thank you for that, Skip. Right, so you have a, a free four-part masterclass called Assessing Your, um, Accessing Your High Performance Mind. Tell everyone yeah. just a little bit about that, and I'll make sure we include a link in the, in the video underneath the cool. description. So this is something we've charged people thousands for this information in the past, and for certain groups, I'll put this together, and we've just been gifting it as a gift. You know, for people that really want to invest in themselves, who understand that you know time is our most valued uh, asset. In this, you know, we can get health back, we get love back, we get money back. We can't get time back. So it's going to take people just over four hours. Each one is just over an hour long. They need to look at the screen uh, because the picture says a thousand words. So we've made it interactive uh, in a way where as I'm talking, a, a certain visual will come up. They will see certain people who have put into practice what I'm teaching and they will see unbelievable results. I'm talking like physical results, mental results, financial results as well. And you know, relationship uh, results, because without knowing the truth, and we're not going to find the truth on TV, we're not going to find the truth from the news, we'll, just quickly, because they're not here to give the truth, what they're here to do is create headlines, yeah. they're here to create ratings, so we've got to make sure that we find our sources where we allow our body to receive information, we've got to find good sources, so you are going to need to look at a screen, you know, it's not a podcast, it's visual as well, um, and, and each one goes through how we can literally, act, literally start to perform at our highest levels. Because if we don't learn how to access this thing within our skull at the highest levels, then guess what? We can make our decision from fear. The anger can come up. The fear can come up. The anxiety can come up. The mental health problems come up. And all of those things are just showing us that we're out of alignment. So by going through these four masterclasses, what they're going to learn how to do is how to feed yourself in the right way, how to nourish yourself in the right way. And that's to do with your mind. Because if I ask you this question, can your mind make you ill? What are you going to tell me? I think my mind could make me ill. Yeah, we you know, I've both experienced this in the past. We know our minds can make us ill. Now, at the same time, can our mind make us well? Absolutely. 100%. So we've got to learn how to now focus this thing up here, which is so powerful, in a way where now we're reaping the benefits from it. And, and a lot of it comes down to just reconnecting to the truth of what we are. And, and we don't get taught this stuff at schools. We don't get to, you know, this isn't going to sell magazines and newspapers. This is the stuff that when you practice this and you do it on a, on a daily basis, You'll literally wake up living your life by a design that you're putting in place instead of running the default programs that don't work. So it's powerful. It's a gift. Um, you know, all, the, all people have got to do is click that link and they can go and register for a four-part High Performance Mind Masterclass series and they're going to get the whole lot for free. Fantastic. I'll make sure we add a link underneath um, this video so that people yeah. can uh, go and uh, can get that, Skip. Skip, thank you for, for joining us. It's been enlightening as ever talking to you. Um, really enjoyed it. Thanks for coming on. Pleasure. Thanks for being here, Neil. Cheers. So, Skip's really enthusiastic about his topic, isn't he? Um, I really enjoyed talking to him today about how to detoxify your body, looking at um, cellular regeneration, nutrition, 
cleansing the mind, very interesting kind of thing that I think you wouldn't ordinarily hear, um, certainly in sort of the mainstream. Um, so it's really interesting to, uh, to talk to Skip. Um, and that challenge he's left us with. Yeah, I'm not sure about this one. Um, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm quite um, reserved. Um, so uh, even just the thought of dancing in a room on my own um, is, uh, is a strange one for me. Um, but um, I will do a video on it and I will post the video so that you can um, see um, what I did um, with that challenge, as I will do with all of the challenges from all of our experts. And you'll be able to see my findings from that in my challenge roundup video in a couple of weeks time. To get that video and all of our latest uh, health and wellness uploads, including interviews and reviews, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified whenever we post. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please do share it with them too. Also, if you want to get proactive with your health and wellness, then Total Wellness Club are developing health quests for you over at questly.life. Join while we're developing the site and you'll get instant access to health quests that immediately personalise your health. You'll get to identify which of 10 critical health categories need your attention. You'll be able to track your progress and you'll be able to help us develop the platform as we go. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can get to Questly and I'll see you next week.